Hello everyone, my name is Glenn Hall and today is September 25th, 2019. Today I am going to continue in my series on the mystery of the beast. This is part 11 and today I'm going to discuss the beast that rises from the earth. In the last video I showed you that the seventh beast is the beast that Revelation chapter 13 is primarily concerned with. That beast is the very fearful looking beast with the mortal wound that was healed, the beast that the whole world wonders after. And that is the beast that most people I think have in mind when they think of the beast of Revelation. That is the beast that rises from the sea. And as I have discussed in the previous videos, we are the beast. Man is the beast. But God has given leaders to the beast. And there are seven prophetic leaders of men, leaders of nations, that the Bible deals with. I numbered those in the last video, and the vision of the beast kingdoms really began with Daniel in chapter 2 of Daniel, and Daniel interprets the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, and that is a great image, and you need to read uh, chapter 2 of Daniel to review that. Daniel talks about um, the head of that image representing Nebuchadnezzar, who at that time was the head of Babylon. Babylon was in the process of destroying Jerusalem and all of Judah. He had captured many of the leaders of Judah, including Daniel, and Daniel was now in the court of the Babylonian king. And Daniel was gifted by God to be able to interpret this dream of Nebuchadnezzar's. It was a totally supernatural interpretation of the dream. Now most people will tell you that the head of that image that Nebuchadnezzar saw was the first beast empire or Babylon. And then they began counting the empires from then. But I believe that that's incorrect and I went through all of that with you and showed you that in Revelation chapter 17, the, um, as the angel is discussing this with John, he says this. And let's go ahead and look at what, what he says here. Verse 8 says, The beast that you saw was and is not, and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go to destruction. And the dwellers on earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see the beast because it was and is not and is to come. This calls for mine with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. <clears throat> now remember, it's John who had the vision of the beast rising from the sea in, in chapter 13, that vision had seven heads. So the angel is reminding him of that. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. Mountains are governments. There are also seven kings, five of whom have fallen. One is... The other has not yet come. And when he doesn't, does come, he must remain only a little while. That tells us right there that... Let me read it again. Five of whom have fallen. Five kings have fallen. One is. One of the kings is right now. The king that was right now was Rome. Rome ruled the world at the time of John. Rome ruled the world for over 500 years. So five have fallen. One is, that's Rome, and then the other has not yet come. 
In the last video, the one that was to come was the seventh beast, and that was the one that came right after Rome fell. Well, what happened after Rome fell? You had basically this empire expand westward throughout all of Europe, eastward into Russia, mainly, and we're concerned mainly with Russia, I think, in terms of the prophetic ideas that the Bible talks about. In the 500 AD, a little after that, you had the ascendancy of the Pope and the uh, Emperor Justinian allowing the Pope to become very great with respect to rulership. And so from then on, as history developed, we had what has come to be called the Holy Roman Empire. We had the various nations of Europe culminating quite a few hundred years later with the establishment of the United States of America in 1776. So, <clears throat> the seventh beast kingdom is a very strange and different beast. And I want to take you back again to Daniel chapter 2 to look at that a little, a little better. Daniel describes this image. Daniel 2.32, The head of this image was of gold, its chest and arms of silver. The gold is Babylon, the silver is Persia. The middle and thighs of bronze, that's Greece. It's legs of iron, that's Rome. Okay, So that was the fourth kingdom that he mentioned there. But they are the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth kingdoms. Remember, we just saw that the sixth kingdom was Rome. That's what the angel told John. I believe that the first two kingdoms were Egypt first. That was the kingdom the world government that Israel was birthed out of under Moses. And then later you had the kingdom of Assyria rise to ascendancy. And it was Assyria, which is headed by the capital of Nineveh. That nation is what is the nation that destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel. So all of the tribes of Israel, except for Judah, a lot of people think Simeon, and then most of the Levites. The rest of the tribes were taken by the Assyrians, and they were distributed and dispersed north into, mainly into Europe, after Assyria destroyed the nation of Israel. So I believe Egypt is the first beast kingdom that the Bible deals with the second is Assyria, the third is Babylon, the fourth is Persia, the fifth is Greece, the sixth is Rome. But then in Daniel chapter 2, after it discusses this um, legs of iron, then it says it's feet partly of iron and partly of clay. I believe that that is the seventh kingdom. That's the kingdom that... Revelation 13, the, the beast that we see in Revelation 13 is, that was the beast that would be coming. It was not there yet at the time of John. It would arise about 400 years later. Now, as Daniel discusses this image, he goes on and says in verse... 41. And as you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, it shall be a divided kingdom, but some of the firmness of iron shall be in it, just as you saw iron mixed with soft clay. 
And as the toes of the feet were partly iron and partly clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly brittle. As you saw the iron mixed with soft clay, so they will mix with one another in marriage, but they will not hold together just as iron does not mix with clay. So you have this kingdom being described as ten toes. The beast that you see rising from the sea in Revelation 13 has seven heads with ten horns. But this beast that's described is made of iron and clay. It's partly strong and partly soft. There's two aspects, two ruling aspects to this kingdom. And it's a divided kingdom. In other words, it's not a monolithic kingdom as we saw with Babylon, Persia, Assyria, Egypt, Greece, and even Rome. So those six kingdoms were all monolithic. It was one ruling center. There was one city that ruled. And there was one head of that city. And he was the king of the entire empire. But not so with the seventh. The seventh is a divided kingdom. And it shows it as being ten toes. Revelation shows it as a beast with ten horns. Think now about the Holy Roman Empire. You had the nations of Europe beginning to be formed at the time that the Roman Empire fell apart. And what were those nations? Well, you can think about what they were. You know, Austria, Germany, Italy, France, Spain, Great Britain, or England, Denmark, Sweden, the Netherlands, Finland, Norway. You know, we can, we can name all of the nations of Europe. And each one of these nations had a, had a king, so they ruled with firmness, just like every nation, every nation's king rules with firmness, like iron, strong, a strong-willed ruler. But there's a soft part, a part of clay. What's that? And I don't mean to be neglecting the, the great countries in Eastern Europe as well, Hungary and Romania and the, the other Poland, the other great nations of Europe. So you, you see what I mean? There are a lot of nations that came out of or formed after the Roman kingdom. But what's this part of clay? Well, let's look at how this beast, this next beast in Revelation chapter 13 is described. 13.11 says this, Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. Wow. Rising out of the earth? You mean like out of the clay? Out of the dust of the earth? Is this the clay of the image that was revealed to Daniel from Nebuchadnezzar's dream? I think so. I think so. And what does it look like? Well, it had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. It had two horns like a lamb. Jesus is called the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God who was sacrificed for the sins of the world.
in Revelation chapter 5. Let's just go ahead and turn to that. Revelation chapter 5. Then I saw on the right hand of him who was seated on the throne <clears throat> a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, has overcome, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain, with seven horns and with seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. Verse 11. Then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, number, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, that's millions, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Who can be worshiped? God alone can be worshiped. God is the only one in all the scripture that ever accepts worship. Except for Satan. Satan wants it, but he will never get it from believers in the true God. So, Revelation chapter 5 reveals to us who the Lamb is. And then Revelation 13 tells us that this beast that rises out of the earth, the clay part of the ten toes, had horns like a lamb, two horns like a lamb. And it spoke like a dragon. Does Christ or would Christ ever speak like a dragon? Of course not. But the beast looks like a lamb. It's a pretend Christian. It is a false Christ. It is Antichrist. Antichrist has been with us for 1,500 years. Consider the history of the Catholic Church. Consider the stories of horror we all have heard about its persecution of heretics, of people who disagreed with their doctrine, 
church doctrine. Consider today all the stories that all of us have heard about the goings-on of the Catholic priests, the Catholic bishops, those who had authority over priests who knew that they were pedophiles, who knew that they were homosexuals, who knew that they were assaulting the people, the young children in their churches, and did nothing. The Pope, the Catholic Church, is the epitome of what Revelation is describing here. It looks like a lamb. It pretends to be Christian, but it speaks like a dragon. Its doctrines are demonic, full of idolatry, full of false doctrine, and they always persecute the one who really wants to follow God. They will kill the heretic. They will kill the one who tries to follow God according to his conscience and the best of his ability if they don't obey the dictates of the Catholic Church. You don't hear about the Catholic Church killing people today but it's throughout history that you do hear it. Then you had the Reformation in the early 1500s, and then you, the beginning of the Protestant churches. And you had some faithful Protestant leaders come out, but you also had tyrants come out of the Protestant church as well. And if people did not agree with them, then they would kill them. Take Cromwell, for example, who killed the Catholics in England. So what we have with this rising of the beast from the earth, we have a false church come out. A false church that at first is just the Catholic Church. And it speaks like a dragon. It, it's full of false doctrine. It's full of heresy. It's full of blasphemy. When you see the when you see the description of the beast in Revelation 13. It starts like this, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads, with ten diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its heads. Now let's go to Daniel chapter 7. Find out more about this. Daniel chapter 7, and I showed you this in a previous video, he describes four great beasts coming out of the sea. The first three look like the beast that you see in Revelation chapter 13. But then, after you see the third beast, you have a fourth beast come up. And it says this, verse 7, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. This is the iron part of the ten toes. It devoured and broke in broken pieces and stomped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. It's a divided kingdom. It's different than every beast that was before it. But it has ten horns. In Daniel chapter 2, it has ten toes. 
are these literal horns? Is there going to be an exact, only an exact 10 kingdoms? I don't think so. When Revelation chapter 5 spoke of the lamb who had seven horns, are there seven specific horns that the lamb has? No, I don't think so. I think it's talking about a complete number of what is in view in that particular scripture. And here, when you're dealing with horns, you're dealing with power or strength. And so you have a group of nations that come into power and strength. This nation that is being seen, or this kingdom, this beast kingdom that's being seen, is different from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. So this little horn, this little horn is going to destroy some kingdoms. This little horn, if you know history, you know that the Pope has been responsible for destroying some kingdoms. So this little horn is going to arise and it's going to pluck up and destroy other kingdoms. And behold, in the horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. You know, when I first began to see this revelation quite a while ago that the little horn was the Roman Catholic Church, at least to begin with, I thought of the, the mitre that the, the popes and the bishops and the cardinals wear in the Catholic Church. I may just have a picture here to look at. The mitre of the Pope. Pictures of a Pope that looks like a type of a horn on the top of the head. And it's described here in Daniel chapter 7 as a little horn. Okay, then we come to chapter or verse 9 of chapter 7 of Daniel where it's beginning to describe the establishment of God's kingdom. And I'm going to skip that for now, but we will get to that, believe me. <clears throat> and we're going to go on to 15 now. As for me, Daniel, my spirit within me was anxious, and the visions of my head alarmed me. I approached one of those who stood there and asked him the truth concerning all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of the things. These four great beasts are four kings who shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever, and ever. Then I desired to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the rest, exceedingly terrifying with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze, and which devoured and broke in pieces and stomped what was left with its feet, and about the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn that came up, and before which three of them fell, the horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things, and that seemed greater than its companions. As I looked, the horn made war with the Kodishim, and prevailed over them, made war with the holy people, and prevailed over them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given for the saints, for the Kodishim, for the holy, holy ones." Quit using the word saints. It's, it's a polluted word, uh, polluted by the Catholic Church and, and Protestant churches. A saint is a holy one. A saint is one of the Kodishim, one of the holy ones, one of the overcomers, one of the people who walk with and obey the Most High God. Not just any person who says, I believe in Jesus. And the time came when the Kodeshim possessed the kingdom. Thus the angel said to me, 
As for the fourth beast, there shall be a fourth kingdom on earth that shall be different from all the kingdoms, and it shall devour the whole earth and trample it down and break it to pieces. As for the ten horns, out of this kingdom ten kings shall arise, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the former ones. He shall put down three kings. He shall speak words against the Most High, and shall wear out the Kodeshim of the Most High, and shall think to change the times and the law. And they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. But the court shall sit in judgment, and his dominion shall be taken away, to be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Listen to how pompous this little horn is. Think of how pompous the popes have been. Think of how pompous some of the preachers you've heard have been. How proud. And yet, think of the many heresies that they have spoken. Isn't it true that the religious leader of a nation always supports that nation? or at least one side of the nation if there's a civil war in the nation, so that, so that the religious leader will always be in bed with the political leader when the kingdom is established. Now that's true for all of the kingdoms that we have seen come out of Rome. The kingdoms that became known as all of the kingdoms of Europe that we now know, all of the nations of Europe that we now know, including Russia. And what are all of those nations known for? Well, <clears throat> there's a word called colonialism. And in uh, Wikipedia, has an interesting comment here. Starting in the 15th century, some European states established their own empires during the European colonial period. The Belgian, British, Danish, Dutch, French, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, and Swedish empires. And the United States. And, later in 19th century, German and Italian. Twelve, twelve different nations are named here in Wikipedia Nations that went out and became colonial empires. What does it say about what these nations do? <clears throat> Colonialism is the policy of a nation seeking to extend or retain its authority over other people or territories, generally with the aim of economic dominance. The colonizing country seeks to benefit from the colonized country or landmass. In the process, colonizers impose their religion, economics, and medicinal practices on the natives. Colonialism is the relationship of domination of indigenous people by foreign invaders, where the foreign invaders rule in pursuit of its interests. Notice that religion was mentioned here. Think of America. Americans came to a nation that was undefiled. You could drink out of any stream. We came with our religion. converted some of the native Indians, took their land, stole their land, and ended up killing many of the Indians who would not willingly give the land away. Was that a Christian thing to do? 
Was it, did we approach the people of this nation in the right spirit? What about the other colonizing nations, the other Christian nations like Britain when they went to China with their missionaries, their Christian missionaries, and hooked China on opium and then began the opium wars because China tried to throw off the opium trade? Did we treat China like good Christians? Our politicians often hide behind some sanctimonious phrase or word and try to hide behind this beast that rises from the earth. And the beast that rises from the earth will often protect the political leader that does abominations like votes for abortion on demand, funds abortion with taxpayer money, comes up with crazy ideas like sex change operations and that people of, of one gender should be able to use the restrooms and locker rooms of those of the other gender. The beast that Daniel saw and Daniel 7 was an incredibly destructive beast. It shall devour the whole earth and trample it down and break it to pieces. <clears throat> Haven't we seen that in our lives? Isn't that what we did to Iraq in 1990 and then again in 2002? Isn't that what we've done to Afghanistan since 2001? Isn't that what we did to Vietnam on behalf of the French? The United States has acted as the enforcer for many of the colonial kingdoms, the old colonial kingdoms like France and Britain. And yet, didn't our presidents always tell us that this was a righteous war? This was a Christian war. We're doing our Christian duty to go over and stomp these evil people. Did you know that... <clears throat> since we obliterated Iraq, that it has been the Christians who have been killed in that nation more than any other. Saddam Hussein protected the Christians in his nation. Assad protects the Christians in Syria. And yet, those who ruled in the seventh beast attempted to destroy Syria up until Donald Trump became president. The seventh beast has ruled this world for over 1,500 years. That is a time, times, and half a time. That's the prophetic time in the scripture. But they haven't ruled alone. They ruled with the help of the false prophet. They ruled with the help of the little horn. They ruled with the help of the priest that is always in bed with the ruling government. Every nation has its religious leaders. Even when the Catholic Church split and you ended up with an Eastern and a Western part of that church, 
the western part became the religious authority of Russia. I'm sorry, the eastern part became the the religious authority in Russia. And the western part, the Pope that we have today. But it's not limited to just the Catholic Church. And don't think that I'm railing against only the Catholic Church. Thirty years ago, my wife prayed, Lord, show me the church. We then began a journey through the church. Shortly thereafter, I became an elder in one of the huge prophetic churches that is well known. Quickly began to see the corruption and left the church in 1993 saw all kinds of false manifestations, heard prophets, acclaimed prophets, people whose names you would know, preach, claim to be doing something in the spirit. And then we'd later find out about certain sins that were never addressed by the church. We left the church, that church in 1993. We tried home fellowship with other Christians for a while. Really ended up seeing the same kind of false spirituality ended up trying a couple other charismatic churches finally went to a Baptist church that didn't even believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and thought well maybe we can at least go here to church and um, you know be in fellowship so we decided we would join that church. We went through there several weeks of confirmation classes. Had planned for uh, become, joining the church on a particular Sunday. All my family, my wife, myself, and our five children sat on the front row. They never called us up to join the church. They wouldn't have us. They knew that I was a man who thought for myself. The leaders in the, the beasts church can't handle that. If you want to follow God, if you want to be a servant of the Most High, you have to follow His voice, not the voice of men. The beast that rises from the earth is a beast because He respects man more than God. He bows to men instead of to God. He speaks with the voice of the dragon, with the voice of Satan, not with the voice of God. We know them by their fruit, And it's time for all of God's people to come out of false 
religion. Come out of the false churches. Disassociate yourself from the ones who are not following the Lord, being led of the Lord, and walking in righteousness. My wife and I never attended the church again. And that was after that was the year 2000. It's now been 19 years. God showed us the church. It's not pretty. Most of what we see, most of what we think is the church is the beast that rises from the earth. It's the false prophet. It's the prophet that props up the beast that rises from the sea. It's the prophet who allows the beast to continue doing his dirty work. And why, why was that beast, that seventh beast, why did it have a head that looked as if it had been slain? Because these nations are sometimes destroyed. But once again, another government arises. A new government. The beast, the head of the beast was healed. And the false prophet is right there. Right there. Right beside the beast. Leading you to worship and follow the beast.